Greetings, guy pals and gal pals. It's me, Camden, on channel Camden. Before I review this show that you clicked on for me to review, first, I'm gonna have a mini review The Spectacular Spider Man. Spectacular Spider Man was a Spider Man show that came out in 2008 through 2009. It aired on WB, and the second season aired on Disney XD. And, um, the show was great. It's the best Spider-Man cartoon ever. And one of my favorite childhood shows that, you know, that was really a part of my childhood as a Spidey fan. While the first Raimi movie was my first Spider-Man movie, also my first superhero movie in general, this was my first Spider-Man show. It was great because... It showed Peter Parker balancing his life between his normal high school life and his life as Spider-Man. And it really done it well. Also, Josh Keaton voices Spider-Man, which is just the best voice for Spidey. But Yuri Lowenthal is still a good voice, and Christopher Daniel Barnes is still a good voice for Spidey. So they're also there, but Josh Keaton is number one. You know it's the first thing I think about when I think about this show? That theme song. That's all I'm going to show because of copyright issues. And second of all, you can just look up the theme and listen to it. Also, this show has a variety of Spidey villains. Yeah, Green Goblin has one of the best, um, this is one of the best versions of Green Goblin. And also, it introduced me to some villains when I was little, like Vulture and Mysterio before Jake Gyllenhaal played Mysterio. So, yeah, when I was in theater far from home, I already knew Mysterio was a bad guy. The show took inspiration from the 616 Spider-Man comics and the Ultimate comics and the Raimi Spider-Man movies all together into one will also be in its own thing. Also, you can't forget one of my favorite Spider-Man villains, which is the best version of... Thank you, Eminem, for that presentation. This is the best version of Venom. Better than Topher Grace, better than Tom Hardy. The best version of Venom ever. Yeah, it has a combination of the 616 and the Ultimate Universe. The ultimate part, the ultimate part being that Peter and Eddie were friends when they were children and both of their parents have, has worked together, together and they also died in a plane crash. crash. The um, 616 part being Eddie being bulkier and stuff. We will have vengeance on Spider-Man! So, show had two seasons. Seasons. And also, the show was really popular with his merchandising and stuff. Even had a McDonald's and Burger King uh, Happy Meal. Had some of them when I was little. I had the Spider Man one and the Venom one. So you're thinking, this show should go for a very long time. Well, um, this is how the show ends with a cliffhanger. I will not spoil it, but I will just simply say this the character you will see is Norman Osborn, and he's blonde. He's not blonde the, in the entire show, but you, you just watch it, you, you'll understand. Yes, the show got cancelled because, um, there are some problems with two money-hungry corporations. You see, Disney bought Marvel, and Sony had the rights to Spider-Man, while Disney had the rights to all the other Marvel characters. And they had to make a deal to somehow keep the show going. But, uh, Sony just gave the cartoon rights to Disney, but Disney does not have the rights to Spectacular Spider-Man. Sony does, but even... All the while, Disney can produce new Spider-Man cartoons. Why am I talking about corporate rights and stuff? So they canceled the show. Who's there to blame? I don't know, just corporation stuff. Even though Sony is evil, especially Avi Arad is at Sony. But on uh, this one, yeah.
hopefully they can bring the show back someday on Disney Plus. They can hopefully make a deal or something. I mean, they're making a deal now with Spider-Man being the M MCU. The, the show was supposed to have more villains like Hobgoblin, Carnage, Hydra Man, Scorpion. Also, there was supposed to be a movie, a straight to DVD movie, where Spider-Man's, uh, what Spider-Man's doing during springtime. Also, I read on Wikipedia, Ghost Rider was supposed to show up in one episode. The show got cancelled. So, what does Disney do to create a new Spider-Man cartoon? A new show called Ultimate Spider-Man. Now, first, I can't tell you about Ultimate Spider-Man. I have to tell you about the Ultimate Universe. Marvel was going bankrupt in the late 90s, so they had to attract younger readers so then they get their money up again. So they decided to make another universe called the Ultimate Universe, where the heroes are more realistic and more into the modern day world. And of course, they started out with Spider-Man. Comics really sold well, and I read them, and they're very good comics has some inspiration for the Raimi trilogy and a little bit for the MCU and also Spectacular Spider-Man like I said earlier. With their Ultimate Universe they made an Ultimate ver version of the Avengers and they weren't called the Avengers they were called the Ultimates. Yeah the Ultimates um well um these versions of the Avengers are not likable at all. Yeah Hulk is a cannibal. Captain America is a French hating bigot. Ant-Man beats his own wife. Well, in this universe, um, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are sister, sister and brother, just like in the regular Marvel Universe, but, um, they're more than friends. Yes, because Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, Brian Michael Bendis was working on those comics. Meanwhile, the Ultimates, Mark Millar was working on them, and Mark Millar likes to make his comics realistic and deal with political issues. And yeah, also Jeff Loeb took over, and Jeff Loeb made it even worse. The Ultimate Universe is very weird. Weird, but that's not the main Marvel Universe, and the Ultimate Universe is dead now, because they retconned it in the comics. Back to the 616 Universe, so we don't have to worry about that. So if they base a comic off, I mean a show off the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, you should say they should adapt it, right? The show is about Spider-Man joining S.H.I.E.L.D. and teaming up with numerous superheroes. Yeah. Also, he has a murder cycle. In similarities with the Ultimate comics, they have the hairstyle similar to the Ultimate comics. Goblin is a monstrous and bulky monster like he is in the comics. The title? Yeah. That's it. Everything else is either from the 616 universe or just made up of their own. Now, um, Spidey teams up with numerous superheroes such as... Um, we have Nova, Iron Fist, White Tiger, and Power Man. They're the main four that Spider-Man always teams up with. That's his own team. And they train under S.H.I.E.L.D because for him to learn Nick Fury has to teach Spider-Man for to teach responsibility to him even though he has already learned it from Uncle Ben's death. Well, Spider-Man has a bike that's totally not to sell toys at all cuz I mean Spider-Man doesn't it's not like he doesn't need a bike or anything. Totally not to sell toys. The first thing that comes to people's minds with Ultimate Spider-Man is... This Spider-Man doesn't stop talking. He constantly breaks the fourth wall. I mean, MG knows me so well. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Watson. So when he breaks the fourth wall, he 
has like little skits and like his thoughts that be in his head like cartoonish type things. Also when Spider Man's thinking about something, a little devil Spidey shows up right here and a little angel Spidey show up right here, like in typical cartoons. And Peter Parker and Spider Man react to things the same way. That's one of the problems with this show, because you have to separate Peter Parker from Spider Man. Even though they're the same person, but Peter Parker, um, has, you know, usually Peter reacts to things different from Spider Man. Spidey breaks the fourth wall, kind of like Deadpool. And yes, Spider Man teams up with Deadpool in one episode in season two. And he's voiced by Ron Stoppable himself, Will Friedel. Spider-Man 3 leaked footage. Oh yeah, the voice acting. Also, Steve, Stan Lee, the man himself, voiced a janitor that's at school. And it makes me smile every time I see him. Also, they got J.K. Simmons himself to voice J. Jonah Jameson. I never met you! There you go, crawling menace! It is the duty of every New Yorker to report the actions of these masked miscreants. So listen up, I will arrest until New York has seen the last- Oh, Clark, Cl Greg, voice Phil Coulson in this show. And Greg Sipes, you know, Kevin Eleven, Michelangelo, and Beast Boy. He voiced Iron Fist in this show. But you're asking, who voiced Spider-Man? Not the one you expect. Drake Bell. Yes, this Drake Bell. So, um, yeah, how's the show itself? The animation is beautiful. It looks great. It's colorful. And some of the action sequences look cool. And Spider-Man swinging around New York is pretty cool <clears throat> and yes I know sometimes spider-man can't shut up you know he keeps breaking the fourth wall like every five seconds oh and the team ups on the show is kind of like Batman Brave and the Bold he teams up with Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Hulk, Hawkeye, Ant-Man, Doctor Strange and many other heroes <laughs> Oh look, after the superhero squad design. Look at him over there. You know he built that armor himself? Like in a cave with a paper clip and some empty sewing cans. Hey kid, wanna watch more Alex Jones with me? Eight. Testing, testing. I'm actually okay with Ultimate Spider-Man. Hey, 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 calm down, calm down, calm down! As a kid. Now, as a 14-year-old, um, the first few episodes, Spider-Man talks a little too much, but, um, if you ignore that, it's not awful. Even, yeah, if you haven't read the Ultimate Comics. But I read the Ultimate Comics after I watched the show, and I kept thinking, Wait, where's the murder cycle? Why isn't he breaking the fourth wall? But really, as an adaptation on its own, um, besides Spider-Man breaking the fourth wall too much, um, it's not awful. It's not the worst thing to come out of Spider-Man, because, you know, this, this, and this. Okay, so, did the show get better later on? It kinda did. Slowly improved. But yeah, later on, the show, um, a little better actually. They written Spider-Man better, and he felt more like that old Peter Parker Spider-Man, and 
and uh, some of his teammates that he teams up with got more character development and each got their own episodes about their origin stories and stuff. Season 2, Spider-Man got to fight with Sinister Six and stuff. Also, I mentioned Deadpool was in this show that night. Season 3, you got more Spidey-like. Also, there were more superheroes that were introduced in there. And also, Spider-Man got to team up with more Spider-People, like Spider-Man 2099, Miles Morales, Spider-Ham, Spider-Girl. In Season 4, they introduced Scarlet Spider. No, that is not Kane. That is Ben Riley. Yes, the show said that was Ben Riley, even though he's wearing the Kane costume. The show resoluted. The series finale was really well done and yeah overall the show is well not awful it started up a little you know loud and obnoxious and trying too hard to be funny but later on it got actually kind of a little better recommend ultimate spider-man sure even though a spider-man breaking the fourth wall will get a little loud sometimes but um you know, you'll, when you get used to it, you'll be fine, because I got used to it later on in the show. Before I give Ultimate Spider-Man a donut scale, I have to give Spectacular the donut scale, since I basically reviewed it in the beginning of this video. For spectac Spectacular, 10 donuts. For the beginning of Ultimate Spider-Man, 6 donuts. Later on in the show, uh, 7 donuts. Guys, I'll see you next time, and remember, it's pizza time. For you, Toby.